Today we are making the turtle sweater. It is an oversized cozy sweater best made with a nice heavy fleece. If you are using a lighter weight fabric, which I admit is easier to sew, I do suggest sizing down. Please read through the read first file. It has all the information on sizing, fit, materials, cut layouts, and adjustments. For materials, you will need your main fabric, a fleece sweater fabric. I'm using a jacquard knit, which is on the lighter weight side, but still very cozy. And just a note that I'm using two different sets of fabric in this tutorial because I made a mistake for my main sample and I don't want to confuse you. For the collar zip construction, you will want a lightweight jersey. It's basically t-shirt fabric. You also need a light to medium weight fusible interfacing, which is essential for the collar zipper construction. I have a lightweight trico here. You could also use a woven as well. You need some 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter wide twill tape. And lastly, you'll need a seven inch closed end zipper. Today I am making a size small. And just to note, seam allowance is always included in my patterns. For this one, it is 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter everywhere. Now without further ado, let's get sewing! Start by applying fusible interfacing to wrong sides of the collar fleece jersey, zip facing, and zip shield. Pre-press your cuffs and zip shield at the dotted lines with wrong sides facing. Overlock your zip facing outer edges and make sure you're not overlocking the top curved edge, otherwise it will become too bulky. Using a straight stitch, sew one short end of the zip shield right sides together. Turn out and press, then overlock the raw edges. This is going to cover the zipper on the inside so that you don't have to feel it on your chin. So it's basically a comfort thing. We're going to use a straight stitch for the zip cutout, so make sure that you have marked the center line of the zipper cutout on the wrong side of your sweater front. Apply the zip interfacing to the wrong side of the sweater front and press in place. On the right side, mark the center line of the zip cutout with disappearing pen or chalk and line up your zip facing over it. I like to fold it in half and then line up the fold with the center line and then open it. Pin this in place and sew around the zip cutout rectangle. Once this is done, you're going to cut down the center until about a quarter inch or six millimeters short of the bottom stitch, then cut from there to each corner of the rectangle stitch, being sure not to snip the stitches, and then turn the facing to the inside and press so that the facing fabric isn't showing on the good side and it should look beautiful and clean, just like this. Looking at the inside of the garment, line up the zip shield along the bottom edge of the zip facing with the folded edge to the right side and the enclosed sewn end at the top. The shield should be centered over the zip cutout. Pin in place and then sew around the outer perimeter of the zip facing, catching the bottom of the zip shield as you sew. And this is what it looks like. This is where we will insert the zipper after a few steps. For the shoulder seams, we're gonna use a straight stitch with twill tape. If you don't use twill tape, then use some kind of stretch stitch like a zigzag or an overlock stitch. With the sweater back facing up, place the sweater front shoulders to the back shoulders, apply your 3 8 of an inch wide or one centimeter wide twill tape about a 16th or two millimeters from the edge and sew at the 3 8 or one centimeter seam allowance. Trim the seam allowance down so that it is narrower than the twill tape and sew the twill tape to the sweater back. The twill tape stabilizes the shoulder seams so it will keep it from growing if you put it on a hanger or just stretching out over time. And it also looks really nice, so it's a win-win. For the collar assembly, we're going to use a straight overlock or zigzag stitch, the choice is yours. 
Sew the collar pieces right sides together along the top, leaving the bottom edge open. And it's important to note that I do recommend cutting one piece in your fleece or main fabric and the other piece, the inner piece, with a lighter jersey as I did with my other sample. If you're sewing with an overlocker, remember that the seam allowance is 3 8 of an inch or 1 centimeter. So here I'm cutting off an eighth as I sew since the overlock stitch is only a quarter inch wide. If you're on a domestic machine, you don't have to worry about this. Of course, you're just going to follow the 1 centimeter or 3 8 of an inch guideline on your machine bed. Turn out your assembled collar and press. Now, there are two options for applying the collar to the neckline. The first is an easy stitch version. It's easier, but not as clean looking. Then there is the enclosed method, which is slightly harder, but it looks so much better. <laughs> Starting with option one, which is the easy stitch, and you're going to be using a straight stitch for both of these methods. Place the assembled collar right side to the sweater neckline, matching the center back and shoulder notches, and aligning the front edges with the edge of the zipper cutout. Make sure that you do this very well. You don't want an edge sticking out or it to be back from the edge. I didn't do the best job of this <laughs> on one side, so just do your best. So in place all around the neckline, I'm doing a straight stitch because I'm adding twill tape to the seam later so that it won't stretch and pop the stitches as it stretches. If you plan to not use twill tape over this, sew with a stretch stitch like a zigzag or overlock. So next we're gonna trim down the seam allowance of the body and fleece side of the collar, leaving the inner collar seam allowance as is. Now I use the same fabric for the outer and inner collar on this particular version, but I definitely recommend using a lighter fabric because it's just gonna be so much easier for you. So when you're applying your twill tape, you're going to sew one side of the 3 8 or 1 centimeter wide twill tape just beside the sew line of the neckline, lining up both ends just shy of the front zipper cutout edges, so like a 16th or 2 millimeters, and do as I say, not as I do. As you can see here, I started the tape way too far away from the edge. I think I started it like a half an inch away and it doesn't get concealed under the zipper later. So it just doesn't really look that nice. <laughs> so start your twill tape just like a 16th away from the edge. So I am sewing along the edge of the twill tape, just through the seam allowance, not the sweater body. And I'm sewing about a millimeter or so away from the edge of the twill tape. Now that that is done, pin the free edge of the twill tape to the body and sew it down with the result of concealing the seam allowance. and it just looks so nice. Now we are going to move on to option two, which is my favorite, the enclosing stitch. Again, we're gonna use a straight stitch for the whole thing. And this sample I'm actually sewing with two different fabrics, a fleece side, which is the beige, and the jersey side, which is the white. Place the assembled collar right side, or fleece side, to the right side of the front center neck cutout edge. Wrap the inner jersey side of the collar around to the inside of the neck. Make sure that it's securely and tightly wrapped around the edge of the zip cutout on the sweater body. Otherwise, you'll end up with the collar jutting out slightly. Sew this area at 3 8 of an inch or 1 centimeter, stopping where the zip facing ends, just over an inch or 2.5 centimeters. 
Do this for both sides. Now once you've sewn that, snip the seam allowance to the end of the stitch and clip the corner, then turn out. Flip the seam allowance at the end of the enclosed stitch and line up all layers and pin together. Match the notches on the collar to the shoulder seams and center back notch and sew from one enclosed end to the other. Start and end the stitch as close to the enclosed seam without stitching over it and creating a pucker. Once that's done, we're going to trim down the seam allowance of the body and right side of the collar, leaving the inner neck jersey side of the collar's seam allowance untrimmed. Then line up your 3 8 of an inch centimeter twill tape just over the sew line of the neckline, wrapping it under the ends of the exposed seams, and pin in place and then sew close to the edge of the tape. Do not sew through the sweater, just sew on the seam allowance. It just ends up looking so clean and professional. This method just really makes me happy. Next, pin the free edge of the twill tape to the neck of the body. Start the stitch in line with the zip facing stitch, and then sew along the edge of the twill tape, finishing in the same way that you started. For step five, again, we're gonna use a straight stitch. On the back side of the zipper tape, start by folding the top of the zipper tape towards you. Apply a strip of twill tape, 1 8 or three millimeters away from the zipper teeth and wrap the end of the twill tape over it. Apply this to the right of the zipper teeth on the back of the zipper. So again, this step is optional. It just conceals the back of the zipper tape with soft twill tape, giving it a professional look. Pin along the twill tape and then sew with the zipper foot right along the inner edge of the twill tape. Trim down the end of the zipper tape with pinking shears so that it doesn't unravel, or you could just cut it straight and burn the end. The tape should be less than 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter from the bottom stop. And you can cut the twill tape 
in that area the same way i did not need to wrap it under like i did there applying the zipper is going to use a straight stitch again so place the zipper in the center of the cutout with the bottom stop centered and against the bottom edge of the zip cutout baste or pin the zipper in place with colored thread And just a tip, basting is a bit harder because it's bulky to hand sew. I had to use the table to push through the needle at some times and it was a bit fiddly, but when you're sewing, the zipper will stay in place better than if you pin it. So do whatever feels right to you. And from the inside, the zip shield is aligned when sewn with the left side of the zipper tape. Sew around the perimeter at a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch or two to three millimeters from the edge, starting on the right side. Sew through the zipper and fly shield to start. And just a tip, increasing the stitch length will enable a smoother sewing process since the fabric is so bulky. Then you're going to pivot and sew across the bottom and then pivot again and move the fly shield out of the way so that it doesn't get sewn with the top stitch and sew the other side of the zipper. And you can see here that the collar seams are not perfectly aligned and that's because I didn't baste first. It's not that noticeable, but it's still something you can consider when you're applying the zipper. And note that the fly shield will get caught in the stitch for a short length on the open side of the construction. Mine is a bit more than I would prefer, but it still works and doesn't interfere with function. The rest of this top is super easy and now we are moving on to the sleeves. And you can use an overlock or zigzag stitch for these seams. With right sides together and notches matching, sew sleeves to the sweater body at 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimeter. Again, remember if you are doing an overlock stitch to cut off the eighth of excess seam allowance. Now we're going to top stitch the seam allowance to the sweater body using a lightning or zigzag stitch. These stitches allow the seam to stretch. However, the lightning stitch is a bit of a headache to remove if you make a mistake, so be careful with it. The reason why I like a lightning stitch is because it's the closest thing to just a regular straight stitch, but it also stretches unlike a straight stitch. Moving on to the side seams, we're gonna overlock or zigzag it again. Pin your side seam right sides together from sleeve hem to sweater hem and sew it at 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter with an overlock or zigzag stitch. You're going to place your sleeve cuffs right sides together along the short side, sew that up, and then fold in half with wrong sides together. I like to snip it in the middle and then alternate the orientation of the seam allowance so that it just lays really flat. Next, apply the cuff to the sleeve hem, matching the seams and the center notches. And your sleeves are done. All that is left is the hem. Of 
Again, we're going to overlock or zigzag stitch. So take your one and three eighth inch or 3.5 centimeter wide jersey tape that you have cut out using my little guide and pin to the right side of the hem. Leave about an inch tail at the start and you're going to leave an inch tail at the end so that you can stop and sew them together before closing it up. Stretch it a little as you pin, especially around the hem curves, but don't stretch too much, just kind of pull it a little bit. Since this seam is a continuous loop, I'm snipping in a quarter inch ish so that I can get in there and cut off that extra width on my overlocker. And you'll see that it makes it easier to finish at the end. Then you're going to sew this at three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. And then when you come around to the end, stop your stitch an inch or so short of where you started and sew the ends of the jersey tape together, then close the gap left along the hem. And of course, you can sew this with a zigzag stitch on your domestic machine anytime I use an overlocker. I'm just showing you here with a scrap of fabric. The zigzag stitch allows the fabric to stretch as opposed to a straight stitch, which just breaks when stretched. Iron this seam open and then fold the jersey tape to the inside and pin it in place. Now, if you're going to sew a zigzag stitch, pins are enough to keep it in place and sew it neatly, but I am going to be sewing with a double needle, so I'm basting the hem just an eighth or three millimeters from the edge of the jersey, and this will make it easier for me to sew from the top. And I'll quickly show you how to set up a double needle. It's really easy. You'll want a double needle that is compatible with your particular machine. I'm sewing on a Singer Quantum, so I'm using the Singer needle. Remove your single needle and replace it with the double needle. Make sure the right sides of the needles are facing you. Thread the left needle first, then feed through another spool. I'm setting my machine to a double needle setting and then I just do a test stitch on a scrap and I found that the bottom stitch is a bit tight and when it's tight like that, it doesn't stretch as well. So I increased the tension of the top needles a bit and it turned out a lot better. When I sew, I keep the base stitch in between the two needles, ensuring that I don't snag the basting stitches and that I catch the edge neatly. It's easy and it looks super professional. Actually, it was funny, I was sitting at my desk and my husband asked me where I got this sweater and beaming, I replied that I made it. And he was so surprised, even though he knows I sew 90% of my wardrobe. So if you follow these instructions, you too can have a professional looking garment. Once you're done, give the hem a quick press and you are finished. Congratulations on sewing your very own turtle sweater. Tag me on Instagram using hashtag turtle sweater and at me at Lydia Naomi Studio. Thanks for watching. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.